hello boys welcome back to another session of video tutorials and this session is meant for class 11th biology students and this is meant for 29th september 2020 we were into chapter number 22 chemical coordination and integration if you recollect from your memory it helps you to understand that we were talking about endocrine system particularly our own human endocrine system and in that we were talking of various glands we listed the glands of endocrine that are present in our body their location and the hormones that they secrete now continuing with that we talk of hypothalamus hypothalamus is considered as supreme commander as i said yesterday of endocrine system it contains uh, several groups of neurosecretory cells called nuclei which produce hormones these hormones regulate the synthesis and secretion of pituitary hormones that is what we are going to talk and hypothalamus serves as an anatomical connection between neural system and endocrine system this is important to begin with in this chapter we were talking about the nervous system and the endocrine system what is the connection between the two systems that's why this is the anatomical link the hypothalamus various hormones secreted by hypothalamus are like we said yesterday trh tsh rh adrenocorticotropin releasing hormone gonadotropin releasing hormone we said gnrh somatotropin releasing hormone or gh we said growth hormone and uh, the somatostatin or growth inhibiting hormone gih and that is related to this growth hormone prolactin releasing hormone uh, or lutotropic or lactinogenic hormone releasing hormone this and uh, prolactin inhibiting hormone and melanocyte in stimulating hormone and melanocyte inhibiting hormone we say msh stimulating s for stimulating and mih i for inhibition so these hormones reach the pituitary gland through a portal circulatory system and regulate the hormones secreted by anterior pituitary and middle pituitary the posterior lobe of pituitary does not secrete any hormone remember this the posterior lobe of pituitary does not secrete any hormone its hormones are secreted in the hypothalamus the pituitary is uh, that's why the pituitary gland is called master gland of the endocrine system and it secretes number of hormones these are the list which regulate the working of other endocrine glands since the pituitary gland controls all other glands in our body pituitary gland is considered as master gland of the endocrine system and of course you must always remember in turn pituitary is controlled by hypothalamus so virtually hypothalamus is called supreme commander so what are the hormones the first one is growth hormone gh or it is also called s t h s t h that is somatotropic hormone what is that it do <coughs> or it does it stimulates the growth by stimulating protein synthesis that is the uh, the, the function and uh, if it does not secrete properly or if it secretes uh, too much what happens hyper secretion of gh leads to gigantism heavy growth maybe 7 feet 8 feet you must have seen uh, guinness book of world record tallest person in the world like that so that's due to hyper secretion of gh and low secretion of gh results in stunted growth called dwarfism so too much also is problem too less also is problem so it must be optimum levels and second tsh 
and the target one is thyroid gland and it uh, secretes thyroid stimulating hormone as the name suggests it uh, stimulates the thyroid gland and uh, once it stimulates the thyroid gland what does it do thyroid gland will in turn secrete two hormones t4 and t3 what is uh, t4 it is thyroxine and triiodothyronine t3 it regulates the body's metabolic activities in specific again we will deal with this uh, t3 and t4 and then the third one is acth adreno corticotropic hormone adreno corticotropic hormone acth and uh, what is the target one adrenal glands what does it do it stimulates the production of steroids by adrenal cortex so it stimulates the adrenal gland to produce uh, glucocorticoids and what about prl prl again a target area is the breast it stimulates the growth of mammary glands and formation of milk and lh luteinizing hormone so it stimulates development of corpus luteum and ovulation in female so target area is in case of men testis in case of women ovaries so lh and fsh follicular stimulating hormone or follicle stimulating hormone it stimulates gamete production secretion of sex hormones development of follicles and of course the interstitial cell cell stimulating hormone also it stimulates the leydig cells of testis and induces secretion of testosterone so these are the various important secretions that lh will ensure further we continue fsh just now we said follicle stimulating hormone so the target area is ovaries of the woman it stimulates stimulates growth and development of the ovarian follicles in females so it stimulates gamete production secretion of sex hormones development of follicles three important works fsh is doing and uh, next m s h melanocyte stimulating hormone melanocyte stimulating hormone and what is the target area melanocytes present in the skin what does it do it controls dispersal of melanophores in skin in vertebrates and in man it is bit doubtful <coughs> and this stimulates the production and release of melanin which regulates pigmentation of the skin that is if melanin is more the skin will be black if melanin is less the skin will be fair and uh, hyper secretion as well as uh, hyper pigmentation also will be the disorders of this and of course this is uh, middle lobe of the pituitary will secrete the msh and next hormones from posterior lobe that is neuro hypo physis of the pituitary first one is oxytocin the msh is over now oxytocin uh, the target area is uterus and uh, breast in female it stimulates the secretion of milk from breast mammary glands causes contraction of uterus at the time of childbirth that's why very very important one oxytocin and then vasopressin vasopressin uh, the other name for this you know adh that is anti a for anti d for diuretic hormone anti diuretic hormone and what is the target area kidneys uh, what does it do the adh or vasopressin stimulates the nephrons for reabsorption of water very very important duty it is performing and electrolytes it stimulates contraction of smooth muscles blood vessels and causes raise in blood pressure bp bp will be heavy once vasopressin is high bp goes up and hyposecretion causes 
diabetes. That's why one must be careful. And of course, there's something called diuresis. That is a loss of water through urine. It reduces reduction, diuresis. Further, we go ahead, pineal gland. So the pineal gland is a reddish gray. Look at that, this one. Pineal gland is reddish gray and about the size of a grain of a rice, rice grain in humans. Where is it uh, present? Location on the dorsal side of the forebrain. On the dorsal side of the forebrain. And uh, what does it secrete? Melatonin, the hormone that is secreted by pineal gland is melatonin and uh, function it affects the modulation of sleep patterns very very important in the circadian rhythms and seasonal functions so melatonin is a must to have a nice sleep and if there is any disturbance in the production of melatonin there is disturbance in our sleep cycle and very very important function another important function it helps in maintaining the body temperature so any disturbance fever will come to us and then it influences metabolism pigmentation menstrual cycle in females as well as our defense capability that is our immune system that's why pineal gland though it is very very small it is performing very good functions like metabolism your digestion pigmentation, color, menstrual cycle, as well as immune system, defense capability. Hence, the pineal gland is also performing very, very good functions. And then, the it is also, one, one must remember always, that it also secretes uh, what we call, uh, rather, it reduces uh, the, the quality, quantity of uh, uh, FSH and uh, LH acts as anti gonadotropic hormone. So this melatonin reduces the quantity of FSH and LH and acts as anti gonadotropic hormone. That, that you must remember. And then there is one more hormone called serotonin. This helps in vasoconstriction of blood vessels. So it constricts the blood vessels. And that's why BP goes up. So along with uh, melatonin, you can also remember serotonin. S-E-R-O-T-O-N-I-N. Serotonin. So it is serotonin. So this helps in vasoconstriction of blood vessels. So further, we continue with the other glands. And uh, you must note down the name of the gland location okay and target area hormone secreted and the function that hormone will do plus if the hormone goes up what will happen if the hormone comes down what will happen hypo and hyperactivity so on a paper keep on noting down and once we complete this chapter at the end of the chapter we'll have a, a beautiful uh, table table or column we'll put it and study that will help you a lot and from this chapter a lot many questions will come in NEET exam as well as UPSC NDA. So keep a lot of focus on this chapter. Until then, take care.